السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نور على نور الموصوف بالتقدم والأولية سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم everybody we uh, we are now inshallah going to talk about the story of the uh, Qarnayn and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this story and he did not give us a name of Dhul Qarnayn and the reason as we mentioned last time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make this story general because if he gives a name then it would be just for that person when he talked about the story of uh, Sayyida Maryam alayha salam and Sayyidina Isa he, he mentioned Sayyida Maryam and he mentioned Maryam ibnata Imran he mentioned her he mentioned her father it, because this story is just about Sayyida Maryam alayha salam and no one else in this dunya will have the same thing that happened to a Sayyida Maryam. Whereas when he mentioned, let's say, for example, the story of the people of the cave, so he did not give the names for those uh, for those young men who uh, resorted to the cave just to seek shelter and to uh, be away from... Uh, uh, to be away from uh, the tyrant king. So they fled away with their religion, with their faith. They didn't want to be under the uh, oppression of that king because they knew that he will either uh, kill them or he will force them to go back away from their religion. So we don't have a name for this group. And this group can be any person in this dunya who runs away with uh, just uh, to a land just to practice his religion without any fear here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does the same thing and we are on ayah 83 now when uh, the people of quraysh ask sayyid muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the uh, story what is tell us about the story of dhul qarnayn who is this person so they wanted to know if Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a real messenger or if he is just claiming to be a messenger. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for the story because he doesn't know it. And when, uh, uh, and when someone does not know anything, he should not just try to say any, any words just to give an answer. No. Ask Ask the people who know if you do not know the answer for a question that you were asked. Do not say anything just because you want to say something. Let people have the idea that you do not know instead of saying something that is a lie or that is not right. So what was uh, the answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قُلْ سَأَتْسْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا I, I shall recite to you something that is mentioned in the Qur'an. Dhikra is a story that is mentioned in the Qur'an. So what is this story? Who is Dhul Qarnayn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna makkanna lahu fil ardi wa atainahu min kulli shay'in sababa. Verily, we established him in the earth and we gave him the means of everything. The word makkanna uh, means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the, the, the ability to do everything. And he has given him the means that will help him do everything. So this was what Makanna means. So what happened is that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Sayyidina uh, has given Dhul Qarnayn everything that he needs. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا سَبَبًا So Allah gave him the knowledge of, uh, of things around him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the word Makkana in another in another surah when he talked about Sayyidina Yusuf when he said, Inna makkanna li Yusufa fil ardi yatabawu minha haythu yasha. And thus we established Joseph in the land to settle therein wherever he willed. So he gave him the power, he gave him the ability, he gave him the knowledge that he will be using when he is. Uh, uh, any anywhere he wanted to go, anywhere he wanted to uh, settle in. So, sebaba is the what what you what would lead you to get to your goal. This is the sebab. And here, when we when we hear this ayah, inna makkana lahu fil ardi wa atainahu min kulli shayin sababa, so he had dominion over the east and the west. Fil ard. In the earth, all over, wherever, anytime, anywhere. So he had dominion over the east and the west. And on everything, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, uh, everything gave him everything. Everything was submitted to him. So what happened? He followed the way. He traveled around the earth. So he did not just leave the the reasons and go to to his goal, no, he, he used all the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. So what happened? Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, until he, he, he walked, until he reached the setting place of the sun. So, when you reach the setting place, then it means that you are coming from the east. So, when we, let's say, for example, we are here in, uh, uh, in, in a city, in any city. I'm not gonna name cities, but when we are in a city and we look at the horizon, we see that the sun is setting. But the, does this mean that the sun went away? No, it's rotating to another place where it is shining, where it is sunlight for other people. So how, how, how can we understand this? If, if the sun is setting on people at different times, then there are people now are praying sunset, Salat al-Maghrib. And the sun is setting, uh, uh, is rising to the other people who it went to, then those people are praying Fajr. And in between these two places, there are people playing Zuhr, Asr, Isha, and so on. So what happens is that at the same time, there are people doing pray all, all types of prayers. At the same minute, some people are praying Fajr, some people are praying Isha, some people are praying Zuhr, some people are praying Maghrib. So at the same time, and this happens every single minute. So what does this mean? Ya zaman wa fika kullu zaman. So we are talking about time when all people are doing different prayers. And that's why the people are always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are always performing salah. People are always doing adhan and 
their, the, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there all the time. Now he reached the place where the sun sets. So he can see the sunsets. Uh, the, the sun uh, uh, the sunsets, yes. So he took a route and followed it until he reached the furthest point that could be reached in the direction of the sun setting and which is the west of the earth. So what happened? What did he find there? وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةٍ So he found there's no more land. So he saw that the sun as if, it, as if is sitting in the sea, into the sea. It's diving into the sea. So he found it. Uh, he, he saw that as if the sun was setting into the ocean. But we know that the, never, uh, that the sun never sets into the ocean. The sun never leaves its path. So what happened over there at that place? وجد عندها قوما. So there he found, uh, at uh, near there he found a group of people, he found a nation. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the Qurnayn? قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا يا ذا القرنين either you punish them or you treat them with kindness so Allah سبحانه وتعالى gave ذا القرنين the power over those people and he gave him the choice you can punish them, you can kill them, you can do whatever you want. Or you can do something good for them. This is something that we need to keep in mind. When you have the power over some, some people, you can either be oppressor or you can be a kind a kind person even if they are bad and even if you have the ability to punish them just wait just look at what sayyidna uh, what dhul qurnain said he said qala amma man zalama fasawfa nu'adhibuhu thumma yuraddu ila rabbihi fa yu'adhibuhu 'adhaban nukra so he divided those people into two groups. As for, for him who does wrong, we shall punish him. فسوفة. And in the Arabic language, the word sawfa means that I will do the work I want to do, but in the future, not immediately. So what does this, what does this mean? that Dhul Qarnayn, Dhul Qarnayn was a very just person. So his faith and justice became apparent when he replied this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ أَمَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ فَسَوْفَ نُعَذِّبُهُ We will punish, we will punish him, but later. Why? Because sofa means he is going to give him a chance. Because that person, when he listens to what he is going to say, to what Dhul Qarnayn is going to say, and what Dhul Qarnayn is going to say is that he wants to just tell them. He wants to advise them. He wants to tell them the truth. He wants to tell them about the day after. He wants he want just for them to be guided. He wants them to, to know what is what are they required to do in this dunya. 
So he gives them a chance to understand and to go back away from their transgression, to repent. So we have to be like that. Give people chances. Give people chances. They might regret. They might come back to you. They might say, oh, we, we did something bad and, and we are sorry that we have done this bad thing. So they will ask for your forgiveness. And the more good manners you have towards people, the better that, the better way they will treat you. Because they will realize how you did not treat them the same way that they, they did to you. And this is not easy. When Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Sayyidina Abu Huraira, he told him, Ya Abu ya Aba Huraira alayka bi husni al you have to have good manners. And one of the ways that one of the good manners that he explained to him was to forgive those who oppressed you. Give a chance to others. Because people are born on fitrah, on what is good. So if you show them good, they cannot show you bad. أما من ظلم فسوف نعذبه ثم يرد إلى ربه فيعذبه عذابا نكرا. So we shall we shall give a chance to people, but those who who uh, insisted on their position, those who insisted on their transgression, then we shall punish punish that person. And then he will be brought back into his Lord, who will punish him with a terrible torment. The word zalama uh, is so vast, has so many ways of being uh, a zalim. There are so many ways to be a zalim and oppressor. So the worst Zulm, the worst oppressing, is to oppress your own self. And someone oppresses his own self when he associates another God to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for... And then another way is to oppress people. Another way is to oppress the, uh, those who are weak. And you normally do not oppress those who are more powerful than you. You cannot. It's the same as the animal kingdom. The, the, the stronger will eat the, will eat the weaker. But what does, what does he go on and say? But as for him who believes, and follow us in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He shall have the best reward. He will have the reward in dunya. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highly reward him in the akhirah, in the day after. So why do we have... Uh, this type of justice. Imagine that there are people who do not believe in the day after and who do not believe in punishment after death. So no matter how, you, how much you talk to them about it, they will not believe and there is nothing to prevent them to do any bad thing, any harm to others because they don't believe in punishment after death. They don't believe in life after death. So, so they would do all the bad things they think of in this dunya. But if we do not have a justice system, then what will happen to our uh, society? It will be filled up with chaos. 
because those who do not believe in the Akhirah, there is nothing to prevent them from doing any bad thing if they do not believe in punishment, at least in this dunya. He knows that if he kills someone, he will go to jail. He will be killed. Then that will prevent him, at least, from killing. So there will be restrictions. There will be a chaos prevention here. So this is why there is punishment in dunya and then the biggest punishment in the akhirah. The same way, reward in dunya, then the highest, the amazing, the highest, most amazing reward in the akhirah. And those non-believers will not understand this until they die. Because when they die, they will know where their final destination will be. They will realize that how bad thing they did to themselves when they transgressed the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, they would realize that they are losers. But those who were good, فَلَهُ جَزَاءَنِ الْحُسْنَ وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا يُسْرًا So for those good people, we shall speak to, uh, to them words of kindness. If your child does something good, you just encourage him to do more. You just say, bravo, that's good. Uh, my good boy, look at you. This is something good you did. So you say good words. The more good words you say to your child, the better actions he will do. The better good deeds he will do. It will encourage him to do, to do more. When uh, students graduate from school, they do, they, they have a party for them. They have them wear the gown and they have wear them wear and, and then they will throw their hat up and that's, that's a kind of encouragement. Everyone, everyone will congratulate them. وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا يُسْرًا Words of kindness with open hearts. And it is said that one of the things that you will not feel sorry if you do not say is the bad word. And what you can uh, what you can say, the words of kindness, they will be they will be directed directly to the heart. Words of goodness, words of kindness. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqa. The good word is a charity. So now, this was the first group that Zul Qarnayn met. Thumma atba'a sababa. Then he followed another way. حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس. Now until he when uh, he came to the rising place of the sun. So what happened? وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترة. He found the sun rising on people, on a nation, for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had provided no shelter against the sun. So sitra means a barrier, a shelter. So what can we understand here? So many options that those people uh, uh, do not wear any clothes, so there is nothing that uh, would uh, prevent the sun uh, rays from getting directly into them. Or there are people who uh, do not have any houses to prevent them or any buildings or trees to shelter them from the heat of the sun. 
And uh, the Arabic word for those uh, for this type of people is dahun, dahun. So they don't have anything to prevent them from uh, heat, the heat of the sun, or even from the from the cold. Um, or uh, the he might found he might have met people whom the uh, sun would rise for a long time so the day is so long we don't know what Zulkarnain did here Allah did not mention anything He's, Allah said that this is what he found So someone can imagine that being a good person, Dulqarnain, he might have helped those people. Kazalika waqad ahatma bima ladayhi khubra. So it was, and we know all about him. This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew everything about him. He knew everything about his army, about the Qarnayn, about, about everything that he does. So nothing was hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء. Truly nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth or in the skies. And this is an important message. Nothing is hidden from Allah. Raise your children to always have the company of Allah with them. Even when they are alone, Allah is with them. And that will make them know the right way. That will make them differentiate between what can I do? What can I not do? Even if there is no one watching them, they will have the sense, their inner inner sight will be awakened because they know that Allah is over watching them. They know that whatever they say, Allah knows. They know that whatever they do, Allah knows. They know that what, whatever they look at, Allah knows. They, they know that wherever they go, Allah knows. كَذَلِكَ وَقَدْ أَحَطْمَا بِمَا لَدَيْهِ خُبْرًا So Allah knows everything about everybody. And on the day of judgment, he's going to pass the, the records on to people. And people will be so surprised how the records have every single thing they have done, they have thought of, they have uh, imagined, they have... Uh, Everything, everything. وَيَقُولُونَ مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا How come that this book does not leave anything small or big unless it is recorded? ثُمَّ أَتْبَعَ سَبَبًا Then, ذُو القرنين followed another way. حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ بَيْنَ السَّدَّيْنِ وَجَدَ مِنْ دُونِهِمَا قَوْمًا لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ قَوْلًا So he traveled from the east of the earth until he reached the, a place where between the two mountains. And so this was these two mountains were next to each other and there is a valley in between. So there is a hole in between the, the two mountains. The word said is a barrier. You put a said between two things. This said, this barrier might be natural like a mountain or it might be uh, an, uh, a human made like a, a dam, for example. So 
بين السدين between these two mountains there was a big hole there was a valley that this this uh, place something bad was there what happened wajada min dunihima qawman so there the qarnain found people found nation found a nation there and لا يكادون يفقهون قولا. Those people, they could not understand a word. They could not speak a word. There was, they, and it's, there was no, no hope to teach them to speak a word. But there was a conversation between Dhul Qarnayn and these people. So how, how, can you, how can someone understand a person who cannot speak? So this is the way that people use to understand uh, a person who cannot speak, the, uh, dumb per, per people, and it is the, uh, the sign, they understand them by sign. Now we call it sign language, but there at that time, they would understand them by the signs they would make and by... Uh, uh, just you look at a person, if he is angry, he will put his uh, hands on his uh, tummy and he will, he will, he, he, he will, uh, 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 he will mention, he will point to his uh, mouth that he wants to eat. He is, you will understand. So Dhul Qarnayn understood the conversation of those people just by sign. The sign that refers to something said. So what did they say to him? And in the same way, he answered them and he talked to them in the same way that they were talking, by signs. قالوا, يا ذا القرنين. Now they, they were seeking his help. They were presenting their problem and they want him to help. <inaudible> they said, Oh, the Qarnayn, verily, Gog and Magog are doing great mischief in the land. They're very bad people. They harm us, they kill us, they, uh, they do so many things, so many bad things to us. فَهَلْ نَجْعَلُ لَكَ خَرْجًا عَلَىٰ أَنْ تَجْعَلَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ سَدَّةً Shall we pay you a, a, a big amount of money? Shall we give you a big reward so that you create a barrier between us and them, between Gog and Magog and between us? So, why? They are, those are bad people. Those are mufsiduna fil ard. So they were hitting them. They were giving them hard times. They were, they were doing bad things for them. So what was his answer? Qala ma makkanni fihi rabbi khair. He said that. Allah has given me a lot. I'm so powerful, I'm so rich. So that which my Lord has established me is better than your tribute. The power and the authority that Allah has given me is better than what you are going to give me. I am not going to take any money. But, فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةٍ Assist me in strength. You are a lot of people. Then I want you to help me physically. I will make a fill between you and them. They wanted, a, they wanted a barrier, but he is going to do something better. He is going to fill out this space between both of them. So, فَأَعِينُونِي 
أعينوني assist me so help whenever you can help someone who, who needs your help and the best help you can provide is to do it before someone asks you so if you know that someone is in need of something do it before he asks you it's It's not easy for someone to ask for help. So if you do it, if you do the help before he asks you, it will be soothing to the heart that he was not put in that humiliating uh, asking position. So we'll help people. And you can help people Uh, the people in so many different ways. You can help by donating money. You can help emotionally. You can help by just listening to someone. Sometimes people people need to talk and they want someone who is truthful to, 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 to listen to them and to advise them. There are people who would seek the advice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the biggest help you can give them. You can help people by teaching them something. If someone comes to you and he said, I need, I need, uh, I need you to help me. You can do two things. You can give him money or you can teach him something that will generate money for him if always. You can teach him how to fish and he can go fishing. So instead of giving him one time, you gave him always. So different ways of helping people. And here it indicates that the strong person, the powerful person, the power of authority, the person of authority is helping those weak people and the way he did it he did it free of charge for the sake of Allah completely for the sake of Allah when you help people if you are not in need do not take any anything in return remember that your your reward will be saved for you till the day of judgment and you will get it so much so many times multiplied so he told them i am not going to make a dam i'm going to to fill up this hole that's causing you this problem so the redim is to put something and then to put something uh, uh, over it and over it and over it until it becomes on the level of the uh, of the of the ground but what he did is that he made it higher to the point that no one can climb so a'inuni bi quwwatin help me with strength and good work so what did he say atuni zubar al hadid get me pieces of big iron big pieces of iron what he will do is that he is going to heat this iron so much until it is uh, until it reaches the melting point when it reaches the melting point he will add to it melted copper So the melted copper is going to fill all the uh, holes in between. آتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين So when the two sides, when the two mountains now are equal, equally filled, قال انفخو Blow. So he lit the fire until the whole thing was burning hot. Now, the iron 
is melting. Get me the, the, the melted copper so I can pour it over it. So we have the melted iron, the melted uh, um, copper on top, and it was high enough that no one can climb over it. And there was two reasons that no one can climb over it. The first one, it was high enough. The second one is it was so smooth and slippery, no one can uh, climb it. So Gog and Magog were unable to pass over it, over it. They were not able to climb over, uh, over to climb it, nor they were able to penetrate it to dig, to dig a hole through it. They could not climb it, as I said. It was so slippery. So. What happened? That was how Zul Qarnayn helped this group of people. Now, there are so many, so many narrations that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked about this barrier that uh, that. Uh, Dhul uh, Qarnayn has made. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, La ilaha illa Allah, waylun lil Arabi min sharrin qad iqtarab, futiha al yawma min radmi ya'juja wa ma'juja mithlu hadha. Woe to the Arabs from the evil that has approached them. Today a hole has been opened in the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Gog and Magog, like this. And he made a circle with his index finger and thumb. So imagine the circle, how small this circle would be. So Sayyidah uh, Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Zainab uh, asked uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh Ya Rasulullah, Will we be destroyed upon upon though they, there will be righteous people among us? He said, yes, if evil increases. And the word na'am iza kathur al khabath. So the word in, in evil is uh, the bad deeds of people with all its types. So... Uh, in another hadith, Ya'juj wa Ma'juj used to dig a hole. They wanted to penetrate this barrier. So what happened is that they would dig a hole. So they would work from morning till uh, sunset. And when they are, they would dig and dig and dig, and the minute they are about to uh, have the hole, they they would say, go back, you will uh, make the hole tomorrow. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put it back stronger and uh, way harder than it was the day before. So when they, they, uh, they will do the same, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would uh, get them closer uh, to when they, they, uh, they will be out of that dam, that day they will say, you will make the hole tomorrow. And when they say tomorrow, they follow it by inshallah. And on that day, they would be able to break that uh, down, that barrier, and they will get out to people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented them from working day and night and day and night. They would stop. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow them, did not allow them or did not uh, inspire them just to go over it by some type of uh, a machine or anything or uh, a ladder or something. So that was not an option for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped them from saying inshallah until it is the time when Allah wants them to get out. So what happened? Now, فَمَا اسْطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوهُ وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْضَ Someone might ask, what is the difference between اسْطَاعُوا and اسْتَطَاعُوا? فَمَا اسْطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوهُ وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْضَ The word اسْطَاعُوا is uh, if you look at the word istata'u, you find that there is a, an extra letter to the word, which is the ta. So the first one is the original word. And it means, sta'u means they know they cannot climb it and they did not even try. But the second one, istata'u, they know that they can make a hole, but they tried their best, but they could not get this hole done. So, stata'u means they tried and they did not succeed. Sta'u, they did not even try because they know they will not succeed. And this is the same as what happened with Sayyidina Al-Khadr and Sayyidina uh, Musa alayhi salam when he said, وَكَيْفَ uh, تَصْبِرُوا um, uh, Let me see. Okay. ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا And the same thing. One, you tried and you could not succeed. And the second one is you did not even try. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying. So what did... Uh, uh, Dhul Qarnayn say وَقَالَ هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّن رَبِّي So what he did here is that he returned he returned he said this is a mercy from my Lord so he placed the barrier between the people and Gog and Magog to stop them from spreading their evil so he did something good but he said, هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّن رَبِّي He made this good thing that he did, that Allah has made that. That's not him who made it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed him, has made him successful in doing this. So do not ever say, I did this, I did that. No. When you have something good, just Return it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the ability to do this good thing. Don't say, I did it, because I know how to do it. No, you don't. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings you have and all the blessings you, 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 he gave you. Because you, you are able to do it because Allah made you able to do it. Thank him. So they, uh, uh, I think we uh, we have to stop here now. Inshallah, we'll go on next time. It will be the tenth session of the Seer of Surah Al Kahf, and it will be the last one. Inshallah. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته